everyone so we have a little bit different style video today which i've been meaning to film for such a long time so today i want to show you how i make stickers with both of my cricket and silhouette sticker machines i've been making stickers for maybe about two years and i thought that maybe there's something that i've learned on the way that might be helpful for you guys so in this video we are first talking a little bit about the papers and the printer i use and then we'll walk through the cutting process with both of these machines separately in the end of the video i'll also compare them a little bit and share how i like to use them together to make stickers for my shop i know this is a lot of information so i'll be adding some time stamps to this video so you can easily skip to the part that you're looking for and the goal is that in the end of this video you'll have a good idea of which machine would be better fit for you because i think these definitely have different strengths and weaknesses But let's start by going over the papers I mostly like to use. Almost all my sticker papers are from online labels. I think their selection is very good and the cost performance is very hard to beat. I mostly use their weatherproof paper which has this very bright white surface. All my papers are for inkjet purposes and I think from all of those options this is definitely the closest to a vinyl paper but it's not as expensive than most vinyl papers I've seen. I also use the standard white matte paper which is the cheapest option. When I first started my shop I used the standard paper for all my white stickers but when I started to compare different papers I saw that there is a pretty big difference in the printing quality between these two. I think the standard white paper would work perfectly for some vintage style illustrations. It definitely has a more papery end result and the illustrations look a little bit softer. I use this one for some basic calendar and color dot stickers in my shop but when it comes to pictures that have more details in them they just show up so much more clearly in the weatherproof sticker paper. I hope you'll be able to see the difference here in the video. All of these sheets are printed with the same settings on my Canon Pixma Pro 100 printer. So you can see that there's some difference in the colors as well, even though these are printed with the same settings. And then the last paper I use from online labels is the clear matte paper. This one has a fully translucent background and I think it creates the most invisible sticker look. And I really like that it doesn't have a glossy sheen like most clear papers tend to have. This paper is a dream to use to print a lot of sheets because the ink dries really fast. But it's sometimes a bit of a struggle to get the color show up correctly on this paper. I feel like no matter what you do it's very hard to get bright colors on this one so nowadays I tend to use this option mostly for some journaling focus stickers. It also works perfectly for only black illustrations and for pictures that don't require super bright colors. Then for bigger, a little bit more high quality individual stickers, I use this different matte vinyl paper that I just ordered from Amazon. This is much thicker and just feels a little bit nicer quality than the other papers I use. It's much more expensive though and it comes in smaller quantities. So I maybe wouldn't recommend this one for sticker sheets. I have also had some packs where a few of these sheets have some weird dents and creases in them. So for expensive paper, it's quite unfortunate if you're not able to use all the sheets you get. My stickers are mostly for journaling purposes, so I haven't experimented with any waterproof coating or anything like that. If you have any good recommendations about that, I would love to hear that in the comments. But anyway, I think that's all about the papers. I link all the products and tools I use to the description, by the way, so you can find everything from there and now it's time to start walking through the actual sticker making process with the Cricut machine first. 
I have the Cricut Explore Air 2 and this is the machine I got first so I've been using it for a little bit over two years in this point. I think there are definitely some important functions missing when it comes to the print and cut options of this machine so we'll need to take some extra steps to get around those problems which definitely makes this the more complicated and time-consuming method to cut stickers. That being said, they have been adding some new functions since I first got this machine, so maybe they'll keep doing that moving forward as well. Okay, but let's get started. So first of all, I design all my stickers in Photoshop and I actually make all the sheets and cut shapes there as well. And then just upload everything to the Cricut's Design Space program. The reason for this is that I simply hate using this Cricut program. So I try to avoid it as much as possible. I think it's pretty inefficient to use and for someone who is used to using a little bit more complicated programs, I don't really see any reason for using the design space for making your sticker sheets. Now that being said, you don't need to have Photoshop or another program to make your sticker sheets, especially if you're someone who just wants to cut stickers for your own purpose, there's absolutely no need to get an expensive program for that. But I think this video will be a little bit more focused on the business sticker making aspect because I think there's less information about that out there and I think the methods I'll show in this video can be used for both purposes anyway. So in my opinion, the biggest problem with the Cricut machines is that you're not able to add images to the sticker sheets that you don't want to be cut. So this means that if you want to add your shop logo, a title or some sort of background for your sticker sheets, you'll need to take some extra steps to get around that problem. The way I've solved this is by having two different projects in the design space for printing and cutting the sticker sheets. This is probably not the only way, but it's the one that works for me and I think it might be a little bit complicated, so let's try to go through the whole process very slowly. So I start everything in Photoshop where you can see that I have the images and then the cut shapes on different layers. I think also keeping the background images and titles on different layers makes everything easier for you, but at least the cut shapes should be separated from everything else. Anyway, I have two of the same sticker sheets on this page, which means that I'll be getting two of the same sheets from one sheet of sticker paper. Then we will first save the image that I want to be printed and I usually save it as a JPEG file, but PNG or some other file types could work as well. Also, I save my images in RGB color profile, which is usually only used for digital images. I know it's not the smartest thing to do for files that are meant to be printed. You generally want to use the CMYK color profile for that, but I've made all my printer color settings work for the RGB color mode and it works for me, so I personally haven't seen any reason to change that. However, if you need to send pictures to manufacturers, they usually request the images in CMYK color profiles, so I think just knowing the difference is still important. But that's the printed image, and now we'll save a different file for only the cutting shapes. The important thing here is to get your images to line up perfectly and I've noticed that Cricut doesn't really let you align them well even if you change the placement in the design space. So what I do instead is adding these small dots to the very corners of the cutting image so it surely gives the image exactly the same size as the printed image. You can keep these dots as small as possible and I promise no one will notice them in your sticker sheets and if you like to round the corners these will be cut out anyway. So for the cut file we want to remove everything else except the cut shapes from the image and it's important to also have the background transparent. Then we'll save this file as .png that will keep the transparent background. 
But now that we have these two separate files, it's time to jump to the design space program. So we'll start by making a new project and start with the printed image. So you'll click upload here in the canvas and then we'll choose upload image. Then we'll find the print file we just created. And I always use this complex option here that will make sure that the image quality is as high as possible. And then we'll click continue. In this next step, you're able to erase something from the picture if you want, but as I mentioned, I've already done all of this in Photoshop, so the picture should be ready to go. We'll click apply and continue, and then you'll choose the print then cut image option and hit upload. Now you will see that your image here is in the recent upload section and we'll choose it by clicking it and then hit add to canvas. Now you'll probably have a sheet that's too big and in wrong place. So what I do first is rotate the image 90 degrees so that it fits the right way on the cutting mat. And then I'll resize the image. So this is the size of all my sticker sheets. It's pretty close to the maximum size that Cricut allows you to print with. If you use inches, this number is a little bit different and you'll be able to find out the maximum possible size by clicking this small exclamation mark next to your image file on the right side of the canvas screen. But now the last thing we'll need to do here is to place the image file to the corner. So you'll make the position here zero. For some reason, the program sometimes automatically makes the position 0.071 or something like that. But I haven't noticed that it has any effect on my cuts. So if it doesn't let you do zero, it's fine. And we can still save these sheets to our projects and then we'll click make it. On this next page, you'll see how you're supposed to place the sticker sheets on your cutting mat. And now we'll click continue and send the image to printer. I always choose to not add bleed. This means that the program creates some positive space around the image so that it doesn't cut right along the picture edge. But again, I have already taken care of that when making the image and the cutting files in Photoshop. I haven't had very good experiences with with the Cricut's own bleed function. I also always choose to use the system dialog setting so we can open the computer's own printer setting page that lets you change the color settings and so on. So now we'll hit print and usually the print setting window opens behind your Cricut program. So don't be surprised if nothing pops up for you. You can find it by moving the Cricut window out of the way. Now, this print setting page also doesn't work well with Cricut for some reason. There seems to be some sort of error that doesn't let you write anything here, but you're still able to change the printer settings and save them as presets that you can use later. As you can see, I have a lot of presets here that work for different paper types or certain sheets that I've had in the past. And I just keep notes of which presets work for different stickers. For most sticker papers I use, I found that the plain paper media type works the best with my printer. And I think it's very important to always choose the highest printing quality that you can. Then to get the colors as close to what I want as possible, I usually need to increase the yellow color setting and add some intensity to the colors. Again, this is something that you'll just need to figure out with your own printer and sticker sheets. And I sometimes even edit the colors in Photoshop too, if I feel like they don't print the way I want. The sheets usually always need some adjusting, but if you spend enough time with each new sticker design in the beginning, you can just use the same settings moving forward and you'll know that all the stickers will look exactly like you want. Then next we'll choose the amount of copies we want to print and again, for some reason, this window doesn't let me write anything here. So I'll just need to use the arrows to change the copy amount. And then we just hit print and let the printer do its job. So that's all we'll use this printing file for. And now we'll just exit this project without cutting anything and make a new project for the cutting file. I know this might seem a little bit tedious and this step is not necessary if you only have cut images in your file. 
but again if you want to create sticker sheets for your shop usually there's at least the shop name and sticker title that you might want to add to the sheets which is possible with this extra roundabout step so this time we'll start by doing the exact same thing and I always choose the print and cut option here for the images as well though it's probably not necessary because we'll never use this file for printing anything this is just to perform the cuts after we have the cut image on the canvas we'll again rotate it 90 degrees and make it the same size as before so it's important to check here that the size exactly matches with your original image and because we added the small dots to the corners the alignment should be also perfect with the printed image if you want you can always upload the printed image here just to check that everything is okay and you can just delete that picture before we save the project and move on to the cutting phase So now we'll first hit this I've already printed option here and it will let us skip right to the cutting phase. Now we'll need to set the base material which means the cutting pressure that the machine will use. I have made my own cutting profiles for each sticker paper I use and I'll leave the pressures here to the screen if you want to try the same ones for your own sticker paper. Please keep in mind though that there might be some small differences between the machines and plates so these might not work for you 100% and it's always better to make a few test cuts before committing to any certain pressure. The pressure might also change slightly if your plate is new versus worn out so checking that the cuts work for your sheets every once in a while is probably a good idea. So this time I wanted to do a kiss cut for the weatherproof paper that we talked about in the beginning which means that the machine will only cut the sticker paper side of the paper and not all the way through to the backing side. Then we will place the printed sticker sheets to the cutting mat following the borders as well as possible. If the border is not exactly straight, it usually doesn't matter that much because your machine will determine the placement of the sticker sheet from the black registration marks anyway. I find it the easiest to first place the corner, then the long edge of the paper and lastly the short edge. And I know placing the paper here might feel a little bit difficult in the beginning, but you will get used to it pretty fast. Then we will load the cutting mat to the sticker machine, making sure that you're loading it in the right angle and that the mat is under both of the tray safety thingies. Then we just hit the arrow button that loads the paper to the machine and then the C button that begins the cut. I've noticed that Cricut has made some software updates in the past two years and reading the registration marks takes a little bit longer than it used to. In my experience, it has also improved the cut alignments a little bit and after some of these updates, I've had way less trouble with the alignments than I used to have. I would love to hear if you have similar experiences or is it just my imagination? The cuts are still not perfect every once in a while which can't really be helped but I would say that nowadays I get a perfect cut maybe 90 to 95 percent of time but if you feel like you struggle with alignment issues very consistently I think it might be caused by something else than your sticker machine. I've listed some of the most common problems I've faced here and all of these might cause troubles with your cut alignments. However, if you notice that there is one image in your sheets that's consistently a little bit to the right or left, you're able to also move the individual cut shapes on your cutting file in Photoshop. I sometimes do this if I feel like there's one image that cuts wrong every time. So I just move these individual images a little bit and then just save the cutting image again and replace the old project with the new file. But now that you hopefully have your perfectly cut sticker sheet, we'll take it off from the mat by bending the mat rather than trying to rip the sheet away from it. And now you can either cut the sheets by hand or just make another cut project just for the sticker sheet outlines where you'll use a stronger pressure to cut the whole area out of the sticker sheet. 
I used to cut all my sticker sheets by hand, but nowadays I have so many stickers that I feel like cutting them by hand is a little bit hard for my wrists. So I usually cut the sheet outlines with my silhouette machine because it's way faster and I like to be able to use both of the machines at the same time. But that's it for the Cricut portion and now let's quickly go through the same sticker cutting process with the silhouette machine. I promise this will be way faster because we are able to do all the same steps in one sticker project rather than separating all the steps. We'll start again by saving two separate files for the print and then cut just like we did before. But with Silhouette, you won't be needing to add the extra dots to the corners because we'll be able to align the pictures in the program instead. I generally like the Silhouette's design program much more than the Cricut one. I think it feels much more professional and efficient. But at the same time, I think for someone who's maybe not used to using design programs that much, this might feel a little bit more difficult one to get used to. The program looks a little bit intimidating like this when you open it, but the truth is that to make stickers, you don't need to use most of the stuff you see here on the screen. Anyway, in Silhouette, we'll start by opening all the files we want. So for me, this means there are three different images. One is the printed image, then one is the cut line for the sticker shapes, and the third one is the cut file for the outlines of the sticker sheets. It doesn't matter which one of these you use to make the eventual cutting file. And then we're gonna start by opening the page setup section. So my machine is the Silhouette Cameo 4 and I use the Silhouette's own cutting mats. Again, we'll choose the US letter size paper and make sure that the orientation is what we want. Then we will jump to the registration marks page where we'll be able to edit all these marks that the printer will create. I think this is probably the number one thing that will affect your cut alignments. So I would recommend always making the registration marks as big as possible. Unfortunately, this also means that the size of the sticker sheets needs to be cut down as well. But I've noticed that the cuts are way better if you make the length and thickness of the lines here bigger. So these are the settings that will allow me to create exactly the same size sheets as my Cricut machine. But if I cut different stickers, like individual vinyl stickers, for example, I usually make the length here closer to the maximum. And then there's also this inset setting option, which also makes the cutting mark area bigger. But I don't usually touch this or the other settings here much. After that, we'll need to resize the sticker sheets and rotate it 90 degrees again. Then I just place the image here so that it doesn't touch the registration mark areas. And after that, we'll add the cut images to the same file by just copying and pasting them here. So here you can place the cut images exactly like you want. And the amazing point about Silhouette is that you can do different cuts on one go and also leave out images from the cutting process. You can organize all of this by setting a different color border for the images. So the sticker kiss cut lines here will have a red border and then the outline sticker sheet edge cut that I want to go all the way through the paper has a black outline. Then I usually set the print image outlines to transparent. I like to place all the cut images under the print image because even though they don't show up in the print, I've still experienced that they sometimes create a small line to the printed image. So this will just make sure that the printed image is always on top. Then we'll open the printer settings, which is the same thing as with the Cricut, except that the printer setting page doesn't have the same errors than with the Cricut. So you'll be able to use this a little bit better. Also, something I've noticed with the Silhouette is that the colors often turn out a little bit lighter when we print them through this program. So you might want to turn down the brightness and saturation of your images in Photoshop 
if you feel like editing the printing settings doesn't help you enough. I don't know if that's just me and my printer, but I've noticed that there is a slight difference with the Silhouette and Cricut printing files. Anyway, after we have printed the images, we are now going to the send page of the program. I like to use this line option where you can select a different cut pressure for each of the different colored lines as we talked about. Again, I'll leave all the settings for the plate pressures for the papers I use. I always use the auto plate, which was the default plate with my machine. I also like to leave the speed setting pretty low because the Silhouette machine is already much faster than the Cricut and I feel like the faster the speed is, the more likely you're gonna get some cutting errors. So then we're gonna take out the cutting mats and I always use the Silhouette's own mats when I cut with this machine. I first tried to use the Cricut cutting mats since I already had them, but I've honestly not been able to get them to work with my machine. I've seen other people cutting with the Cricut mats and using all kinds of special tricks, like making them smaller to fit the Silhouette cutting mat size. But personally, no matter what I tried, I still consistently got errors reading the registration marks. So I just gave up trying and got some Silhouette's own mats instead. And now that I'm using them, I actually don't have any preference with the matte brand anymore. I think both of them work well enough. The only problem with the Silhouette mats is that they are way too sticky in the beginning, but you can easily solve that by tapping off some of this stickiness with an old shirt or cloth that has been washed many times, so there's no additional fabric particles sticking to your mat. After doing this, my papers haven't been ripping at all, and I feel like these mats also stay sticky much longer than the Cricut ones. I feel like the Silhouette machine is a little bit more sensitive with the placement of the sheet, so I try to align it exactly over the black outline of this sticky area. Then we'll load the mat to the machine, aligning it with this small line you'll see on the left side. Then you'll need to push the up arrow on the right side of the machine, and then select Send from your Silhouette program. Now the machine will first read the marks and perform all the separate cuts you selected. And as you can see, compared with the Cricut, we can save a lot of time and effort being able to do all of this in one go. So doing the same thing with Cricut would require us to jump between three different cutting files. Also something I really like is that you are able to use the Silhouette program while performing the cut, which is useful if you're working with different files and want to maybe prepare something else while the machine is cutting. With Cricut, the program is stuck in the cutting page, so you can, for example, prepare other images for printing while performing the cuts, which can be a little bit annoying. But that's the basic way to use the print and cut option with Silhouette, but I'll quickly also show you a different method to cut stickers that doesn't require the registration marks. So Silhouette has this special pick scan mat that you'll need to buy separately, but it allows you to make cuts without the registration marks because those are already built into the cutting mat. So this means that you're able to, for example, cut sheets with the Cricut's registration marks, which is why I can cut the outlines of the sheets out of the paper that have already otherwise been cut with Cricut. You could also use this cutting mat to cut stickers from dark papers that wouldn't work with the machines otherwise. The only thing is that the cuts with this option are not very trustworthy because you'll need to perfectly align the sticker sheets to make the cuts. This is why I pretty much only use this option to cut the edges of my sticker sheets because I have left some room around them so the cuts don't need to be completely perfect for these sticker sheets to still look good. 
The way this works is that you take a picture of your sticker sheet and then you upload it to the Silhouettes program. But I pretty much only use this for the cut edges of my sticker sheets. But in general, I think having this option is a very good addition, especially if you cut stickers with different machines. I'm not gonna go through how to set this thing up because you can find a very detailed explanation of that online and to be honest i've only done it once myself because i just used this same file to cut all my different sticker sheets i don't even remember how i did it so you will get much better information from somewhere else when it comes to the cutting precision I would say that I consistently have more precise cuts with the Cricut, which is why I use it for all the sticker sheets that require a very precise cut. I don't know if it's just my shorter experience with the silhouette machine, but for some reason I tend to have way more alignment issues with it. However, whenever I make the registration marks bigger, it usually fixes most of my issues, but it would also require me to reduce the size of my sticker sheets, which is of course something I would like to avoid doing. But otherwise, when it comes to the speed, functionality and efficiency, I think the silhouette is a clear winner. Being able to do different cuts and leave out images on the same go saves so much time if you need to cut a large amount of stickers. So much so that I wish I could use the silhouette for all my sticker sheets. Nowadays, when I design stickers, I tend to cut the ones that have a little bit more space for error with the silhouette machine. So for example, my color dots and stickers that can have some negative space around the cut lines. I also prefer the Silhouettes design program, as I mentioned, but I also think it's probably the more intimidating one out of the two. So if you're someone who just likes to cut stickers for your own use and don't really have experience with many complicated programs, I think the Cricut machine and the design program overall might be a better fit for you. For a sticker business purpose, I would probably say that the Silhouette is the winner, though I personally think that having both of these machines and using them together is probably the winning combination if you have space for two sticker machines. I love the fact that I can have both of the design programs open at the same time and use them separately, and this way I can also take advantage of the strengths of both of these machines. So performing all the precise cuts first with the Cricut and then leaving all the speed and functionality for the silhouette. If you care about the noise the machine makes, I think neither of these is a quiet one by any means, but I think the Cricut machine is definitely the winner in that category. I was pretty surprised about the volume the silhouette makes when I first got it, but now I'm just so used to having both of my machines yelling at the same time that I honestly don't really mind. But I think that finally wraps up this sticker making video. I know there was a lot of information in here and if you feel like I went over something too fast or you still have some further questions, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. Also, if you like the style of my stickers, feel free to check out my shop. The link there is in the description. And if this was the first video you saw from the channel and you'd like to stay tuned for some more journaling and art tutorials, definitely consider subscribing. But I think that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching this marathon of a video. I hope you'll have an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.